suppose I have a reaction like this 4KClO3 solid giving 3KClO4 solid plus KCl solid. Now in this case if I have given you certain information regarding delta G. Suppose I have told you that delta G of KClO3 KClO4 is equal to minus 433.5 kilojoule per mole. I have also given you information about delta G of KCl which is equal to 435.9 unit will be same as kilojoule per mole and delta G of KClO3 is given as minus 39 minus 391.2 kilojoule per mole. So if someone asks you what is the delta G of the system? Now as we did for delta S, as we did for delta H, so shall we be doing for delta G. Delta G of the system will be delta G of the product minus delta G of the reactant. So in that way you will be calculating delta G. So calculation of delta G here is very easy and uh, like you just have to feed these values. So I'm not doing it, you do it on your own. That's one way of calculating delta G. Alternatively, someone can also ask, not, someone may not give you the rate of delta G, they may give you the rate of delta H and they may give you the rate of delta S and they may ask you to calculate the delta G. So if they do that, so what you have to do is you have to calculate delta S of system separately and you have to calculate delta H of system separately and then uh, you have to feed in delta H of system because remember in this expression these are all of system so feed in the values of delta H of system delta H of surrounding temperature if they have not provided we will assume it to be 25 degrees Celsius if they have provided we will use that temperature and convert it in, on Kelvin scale and calculate delta G so I mean this is no one is going to ask you this problem except for those CBSC people they may ask you in board exam just feed the data and get the answer. Now let us suppose this equation cuprous oxide in solid state plus carbon in solid state that cuprous oxide is getting reduced to copper and carbon monoxide gas is being formed. Now in this expression suppose I have given you delta H naught as 58.1 kilojoule and delta S naught as 165 joule per Kelvin. Now you find out delta G for this expression delta G calculation of delta G is very easy um, if I am if I have not mentioned temperature you will take that temperature as 298 Kelvin now you find delta G and uh, delta G uh, will come out as delta H minus T delta S De I mean, delta H is given and delta S is also given and T is also given this calculate delta G and delta G if you calculate and please do calculate you will get as 9.1 kilojoule so delta G is positive this means that this reaction is not going to occur at room temperature because for a spontaneous reaction delta G has to be negative and this is coming out to be positive that means this reaction is not spontaneous now the question is like this now as you can see that delta S is positive. So if delta S is positive then at higher temperature this reaction can be made to be spontaneous because delta G is delta H. Delta H here is positive. T delta S at higher temperature is going to dominate. So T delta S is positive because delta S is positive and with this minus sign the whole expression is negative. So this T delta S at higher temperature is going to make this delta G negative. So you have been asked the temperature at which the reaction will just start to occur 
just starts to be spontaneous. That means that the value of delta G just starts to be negative. So in at critical state, we are assuming that delta G is zero. At that temperature, the reaction will just start. And if you increase the temperature further, the reaction will be spontaneous. So delta G is delta H minus T delta S. So that temperature is going to be delta H upon delta S. Delta H you know, delta S you know. So their ratio you know, it will come out to be 352 Kelvin. That means it is 79 degrees Celsius. So above 352 Kelvin, this reaction is going to be spontaneous. Below 352 Kelvin, it's going to remain non-spontaneous. Fine. So this is, I mean, we are dealing with simple trivial problems in order to get ourselves comfortable with the expression. And once we are comfortable, then we'll later solve advanced problems of ITJ level. Now suppose I have expression same as before, Cu2S, or I have a different expression. Suppose let me make it Cu2S giving you copper and oxygen. This is basically decomposition of cuprous oxide. Now, this reaction suppose is occurring at 375 Kelvin. Delta G for this reaction is given as 140 kilojoule. Okay. Now, there is another reaction which is this carbon and half of oxygen gives you carbon monoxide. Now delta G for this reaction is minus 143.8 kilojoule. Now this reaction is spontaneous because delta G is negative. This reaction is not spontaneous because delta G is not negative. However, if we have these two reactions together, suppose I add these two reactions, then that reaction would become Cu2O solid plus carbon solid is going to give 2Cu solid plus Cu gaseous. This is the net reaction. If I am adding this reaction, because delta G is a state function, delta G, how delta G is a state function? Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. During defini defining delta S, first of all, we observe that there is a quantity which is a, is a state function and then we defined it as delta S. So delta S obviously is a state function and from prior knowledge, delta S H is also a state function. So the whole expression is a state function. So delta G is also a state function. Now, because delta G is a state function, so we can, when we add a reaction like this, we can also add correspondingly delta G's. Okay. So when we are having these two reactions coupled with each other, then the net delta G will be the sum of the individual delta G's and this time the delta G would be, I mean the sum would come out to be minus 3.8 kilojoule. So this is the benefit of coupling. The net reaction will occur even though the individual reactions are not occurring. So when we having two reactions, then the delta G if you're having an extra delta G of 1, that can help to make the delta G of other reaction which is non-spontaneous to be negative in order to make it spontaneous. This is called coupling reaction. Now these two reactions could have been independent of each other as well. This, If they're happening in the same system and they have, do not have any atoms in common, then also the delta G of 1 will help the delta G of other. Fine. And, and that's how uh, generally one reaction is coupled by the other and the non-spontaneous reaction becomes spontaneous. Fine. Now, let me give you one problem very similar to this 